This is Bringing Psychedelics to Life with Mr. Derek Welsh, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Silicon Pharma. How are you, sir? I'm well. Thank you for having me. It's a great day for psychedelics. Yeah, always is, it seems. But uh, wow, lots changed since we last spoke. Uh, big developments, obviously, the U.S. election with Oregon and Washington, D.C., and uh, rumors swirling around the state of California. And then big news, obviously, this morning with uh, the city of Vancouver decriminalizing all drugs. So uh, interesting, to say the least, as to how the industry is uh, expanding. It is. You know, these are big steps forward. You know, I think uh, they finally realized that criminalization is uh, it's not working. Um, and you think they, post- do, you, do you believe that? Do you think that's what's happening? I think that's what's happening. Not only that, but harm reduction is a much better strategy. You know, yeah, criminalizing yeah. people for small amounts of of whatever drug they've got just it hasn't worked. I mean, it hasn't worked in 50 years. Why should it work for 50 more? Yeah. I wanted to have you on today to talk about the versatilities of products of your patents with Revive Therapeutics and your ongoing research with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We've talked about this in the past where research, research, research is so vital and so very important. Uh, One of the things I want to learn to like, you know, and kind of teach to my viewers here today is what IP means in the psychedelic industry and why is it so important, Derek, that you can explain for companies to own their own intellectual property? So IP is typically defined as an asset within a company. And we have three granted patents in regards to our oral thin film technology. Our oral thin film technology, however, can take many forms. That's for a later discussion. But we have a great opportunity with that. And we have ownership of that. We have the exclusivity on it. We developed it. We worked on it. We Mm -hmm. created it in conjunction with the, uh, the team that we have at the University of Wisconsin. This is what makes it so important is that it's not necessarily about the IP itself. It's about the team that developed it. And we've got a stellar team of people that work on our projects with us. And it's a it's a great opportunity to have that in part, you know, encompassed within the Revive family. So when you look at intellectual property, like walk me through what are the advantages of having your own IP versus a company that does not? The advantage of having your own IP is like owning your own vehicle. You're, you can do whatever you want with it. You can drive it around. You can chauffeur people in it. You can put different things in it. When you have, uh, when you don't own your own intellectual property, it makes it very advantageous to do business because you're limited by somebody else. You're limited by decisions other people make on behalf of your product. When it comes to what we're doing with our breath strip, we have the ability to put any compound we want, whether it's a psychedelic compound, whether it's a cannabinoid, or whether it's another pharmaceutical API. Do you think that there's companies within this space that'll run into some of those issues? I think in time they'll see it. Um, I think right now people are really seeing the value in psychedelics, especially in the marketplace. We've seen all of us in the space get quite the lift over the last few days. And it's, um, it's nice to see the hard work get recognized. Right. Um, Well, let's talk about, you know, in the past, some of the compounds that you focus on, which is psilocybin, uh, when it comes to the research of mental health, this is growing and getting, you know, bigger and bigger, as we said, based on what's happened over the last 30 days in Oregon, Washington, D.C., California, as mentioned earlier here this morning, Vancouver, the first city in uh, Canada to decriminalize all recreational drugs. So my question What do you feel government officials, uh, why I should say, why do you feel government officials are changing their outlook on this? And and what do you think is some of the research that's being communicated to them? Well, I think the research that's finally hit home is, like I was saying before, the harm reduction strategy, not criminalizing people for small amounts of of different compounds or different drugs. Um, It offers the ability to help them a lot better. Helping somebody once they've been criminalized is intrinsically difficult. Yeah. Um, But also, I think governments around the world are starting to recognize the research that's being done, not only on psychedelic compounds, but things like ketamine, things like MDMA, things like DMT and psilocybin, of course. Right. So with regards to addiction, you have an upcoming actually, uh, uh, I should say, upcoming study with addressing addiction uh, with methamphetamine with the usage of psilocybin, psilocybin, excuse me. So what are the things that you'll look for in this study? And, you know, how do you go about doing that, I guess, is what I wanted to ask. When we look at our addiction study in conjunction with the School of Pharmacy at um, at Wisconsin, when we look at this, it's hope, you know, the, the hope of this type of a study is that we can provide some research and some data that would support yeah. Um, the use of psilocybin in a, uh, as, a, as an adjunct of therapy with methamphetamine use disorder. And it's only once we're completed the research, research that we're going to be able to say that, hey, we've got a result, you know, and whether that result is positive or negative, 
we have a result. That's what research really is. It's not about whether it's favorable or not about whether it's, um, it's inherently not good. It's about having the research to say. And so far, there have been a lot of studies that have come out that have shown that in, um, in, for example, in drug abuse or in substance abuse, psilocybin has been effective for some people. So, and this is what I wanted to ask. We continue to have this conversation. You and I talk about, as you just outlined, the importance of research. And furthermore, explain the importance of having your own IP and working obviously with reputable institutions. So if you're in front of a group of investors, what would you communicate to them when considering investing into the space if they're new? And more importantly, why do you feel Revive remains a leader in research within this space? Um, what I would communicate to investors is I would invite them to visit our, our patent section of our website. Okay. Um, when you look at that, we really have delivered on a number of different things over the years. We have novel drug status. We have a phase three clinical trial. We own our own IP in the psilocybin space as well as in the cannabinoid space. Um, I think those are very meritable things, you know, and do, you know, are we being rewarded for some of it? I think so. I think the market is starting to recognize that companies that own their own products is much better than companies that don't um, and taking advantage of the market. You know, we've got a great team of researchers that we have the ability to pivot and flex and look at the things that we're doing and really work towards the things that are working. All right. Last question I want to ask you and shift our attention is the research agreement that you announced last week with Pharma there. We had uh CEO Fabio Cianelli on last week. Uh, they focus obviously on ketamine. You focus on psilocybin. Both companies are obviously going to expand their uh, patent portfolio. So why does this uh, you know, uh, research agreement make sense for both companies and more specifically for Revive? Um, it makes sense for Revive because of the, uh, the diversity that Pharma there offers us and vice versa. You know, we offer something in psilocybin, they offer something in, uh, in ketamine. And both of these two, you know, both of these compounds are the front runners of the psychedelic space. Mm -hmm. And being able to have access to the AI platform that they have is it's great because it now allows us to find new and novel uses for things like psilocybin. And this is really important is that, you know, the people that you align yourself with in this business in the very beginning, especially psychedelics and very much like the cannabis industry, you know, those allies and those uh, alignments with the right people are so very important, especially when it comes to furthering your process later on, because Farm there offers unique attributes to their business that are better in some respects than ours and vice versa. It goes back and forth. We offer a specialty in psilocybin. We have a quite the database of information that we've developed yeah. through the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And it's a uh, it's important for investors to see that, you know, your initial partnerships and allies in this space are going to be really important. And ours are entirely based on what we own. You know, we own the rights to our breast strip. Yeah. We have to be granted patents, as I said before. You know, when it, we look at the space, it's very easy for us to drive and pivot. And if we wanted to add something like DMT or ketamine or MDMA or um, LSD for that, you know, just for, for conversation's sake, it's very easy for us to do that. So it's easy for us to make that pivot. Makes sense. So again, we top line, obviously research, the institutions that you're with, and obviously having your own IP, your own intellectual property are important things to obviously look for when entering in this space. Appreciate the conversation today and good insight for sure. Thanks, Derek.